Hi! Welcome to my channel, What Kathy Thinks. My future is so bright, I've got to wear shades. Except wait! It's so dark in here. It's so dark in here. It's so dark in here. I can't see. I can't think. Oh my God, are you there? Kathy? Yes. Are you there? Pen. 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 Oh my God, I'm so glad you're there. What was your name again? Penelope. Oh, Pen. You can call me Pen. Oh, Pen. I'm so glad to hear from you. I've been so down. I've been so down these last few minutes. I mean, for a while there, I was totally up. I was totally up. I was going to rule the world, Pen. I was. I had a plan. I had a plan. I was gonna. I was gonna conquer everything. I. I knew everything. I. I. I didn't need sleep at all. I didn't need sleep at all. And. 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 And every thought I had, it was the best thought ever. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I do. Because when I'm manic, I feel like I am the prettiest, most beautiful, and vivacious person in the room and, in fact, in the world. And I have no doubt that you are. I have no doubt that you are. Isn't that the best thing about being manic or even hypomanic? Uh, that's, oh my gosh, in fact... When when I'm in that condition, I don't need any help. Do you? No, as a matter of fact, that's when I feel I'm at my best. <laughs> in fact, to the point in irritation of others. <laughs> Why? Why is it do they say that that I'm sick? Because I'm not God. I've been reminded of it before. And even though I know you're wonderful, I don't think you're God either. Bite your tongue. I'm going to have to have a sip of wine at that. Thank goodness I have a glass handy. Do you think it's true that substance abuse and bipolar disorder have a high rate of core morbidity? Or is that just an evil rumor? Hold on a minute. I'm having a sip. I'm going to have to let my hair down. It doesn't look that great, but I don't care when I'm in this kind of a mood. You're I... marvelous, darling. <laughs> <laughs> you know what strikes me is so strange? It's so easy to seek help when I feel down, when those moments strike. And I know that it'll never get better. Why, I might as well just kill myself because Tuesday will never end and Wednesday will never come. And if it does, it'll be worse than Tuesday. Is that when you use drugs is when you feel depressed? Well, and also when, when, when. Thursday comes and it's better than ever and I know it can always get better than that and 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 I should always ride that wave because you never know you never know you never know when it might end and and I'm perfect don't you know of course it's obvious <laughs> but everybody else may 
may not see it that way, and that's why it's a mental illness. Because when it doesn't agree with what society calls normal or causes problems for you in the workplace and in social relationships, that's when it's called a mental disorder. And that's what bipolar disorder is, is a mental illness. Is that why at the hearing in federal court, when the occupational specialist told the federal judge that he didn't even think I should be working in a toll booth because it wasn't in the best interest of the public? Is yes, actually, that's true. Because if you were to express some of your opinions to some of the passers through, they might be alarmed for themselves or the safety of their passengers. If you were feeling too grandiose, or if you were feeling too down, too suicidal or depressed. On those moments when I think it might just be a good idea to take everyone else out with me? Right. Exactly. Because then you could hurt a lot of people. But what if I thought I was helping them? That, again, we go back to the definition of a mental illness. And the rest of society would not agree with you if you hurt them that it was for their best interest. And we have to keep that in mind. Others, others' opinions and feelings and rights. They matter? They matter? I didn't know. I didn't know that. I mean, I didn't know that before 1989. They told me in 1989, they sent me to a place and they told me that other people's thoughts and feelings mattered. I didn't know that before that. I thought that other people were robots. But they're not. They're just like you. Some of them even more just like you than you know. They may be bipolar too. And then you can really run into problems. If you're both manic at the same time, or if you both have issues with substance abuse, you can perpetrate that by helping the other person use or making them want to use more, thus causing even more problems, especially if you take medication for your mental illness. Wait a minute. Are you saying that if I'm unmedicated and mentally ill, that I could cause damage to society? Yes, it's very possible. It doesn't always happen that way. Not at all. But it can happen. And it does happen. Oh. Well, I have another question. What's that? I, I have ESP, and when I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, they told me that a belief in ESP was a hallmark symptom of bipolar disorder. And to that I say, well, the reason is because I have ESP. And what do you have to say to that? Hold on. Let me read your mind. Wait. I'm having difficulty. Are you trying to transmit the answer? I don't no. think you're trying hard enough. You'll have to talk. Okay. The belief that you have ESP is another hallmark symptom of your mental illness. It is not part of your normal personality to believe that you have ESP. It is a symptom in believing that you are God and that you have gifts and talents above and beyond everybody else in the world, that you have extrasensory perceptions and that you have powers above the rest of the world. It's a classic symptom of bipolar disorder, especially during manic phases when you feel like you're on top of the world and that you are God. But Penelope, does this mean that I'm classic? 
you are probably a textbook case, yes, by that definition. Does this mean... Does this mean that I'm in literature? Yes, you are. In fact, we all are statistics of one sort or another. Why do I feel that you've reduced me to a number? I have no intention of doing that. I'm just saying that I'm a number two in some book, in some form, because... I am unmarried and have never been married at 51. I'm a spinster. I'm a statistic. <laughs> You're a statistic, too. This time it's just a different kind of statistic. You've cheered me up. How long do you think I can ride this wave? <laughs> I have no idea, Kathy, although I do enjoy you when you are happy. Penelope, <laughs> I suspect that you have a more classic place in literature than me, and this makes me a little angry. <laughs> Should I worry for myself? No, because I, I be <laughs> no, because I am treatment compliant. Can we talk about treatment compliance on another yes. day? Yes, I think treatment compliance would be an excellent follow-up to a talk about substance abuse and bipolar disorder because treatment compliance is an excellent way to combat the problem with the substance abuse. I'm going to go ahead and say that I think we have to end this conversation now. I've enjoyed our talk so much, and I thank you so much for agreeing to talk to me on what Kathy thinks. Please like and subscribe, and you'll hear more from Penelope soon. Greetings from Narnia, and have a good day.